Good Friday morning, everyone. Roger Hill with the Velka Weather Hazards Outlook. Looking at the bigger picture across the country here, up into Canada and also into the tropics. We'll start out with the tropics here. We have uh, the leftovers of Hurricane Burl cutting across the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. It's going to dump out in the open Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche, take a track and likely spin up and then uh, make a landfall somewhere around Brownsville, Texas, a little bit south of Corpus Christi and then make a very slow right turn and rain itself out over parts of Texas. Some of that moisture eventually could spin up uh, and, and reach our neck of the woods. That would be after this outlook period, probably late next week. This is going to be a very slow process. In the, in the tropics otherwise, we have a couple disturbances that have come off uh, the uh, west coast of Africa. This system is being watched, and one that has kind of fallen apart that was... Uh, uh, looking like it was going to get together and follow Burl, but uh, right now it's pretty disorganized with a lot of wind shear. Elsewhere, um, the branches of the jet stream are pretty strong across our area here, so they will interfere with the tops of thunderstorms and potentially organize some of those thunderstorms with the best chance taking place really uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning, Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning, and another chance probably somewhere about Tuesday night into the early morning hours on Wednesday. Those are the two main impactful uh, periods. I'm looking at the potential for an isolated rumble of thunder with a few showers and potentially maybe an isolated cell that could get gusty as we do have fairly strong winds aloft. Those winds aloft fairly linear, so I'm not expecting a lot of supercells, but there could be some bow echoes and whatnot. And this mainly would affect, uh, again, uh, for Saturday night, the Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning. That's probably the one to watch here at this point in time. Any instability uh, due to uh, surface heating will be also uh, made available, so it'll take a while for that to uh, calm things down. So I think we could see some impactful weather. That's the main threat. But overall, this period, really a little bit of everything. We do have above normal precipitation this period. So rainfall anywhere from above normal, especially favoring northern areas, to slightly above normal for central and parts of southern Vermont. Looking at morning temperatures, uh, pretty warm this morning, and we have a lot of heat, of course, out ahead of this weather system here. A little bit cooler than normal conditions moving in along on the backside of this uh, departing area of low pressure from the Great Lakes, which will scoot up into Canada. Uh, looking at dew points, that's the uh, main driver, of course, of a lot of the heat. You add that dew, high dew point temperature to humidity, and we're seeing those dew points up around 70 in parts of eastern New York, and a lot, of, of course, the southeast United States. Pretty amazing to see temperatures, uh, dew points around 78 degrees in parts of Florida. Some of that is going to work its way back north, but that's going to be all pulling out ahead of this uh, frontal boundary, which will be working in again for Saturday late afternoon into the evening hours and into the early morning hours on Sunday. And in current conditions, you can see a lot of thunderstorm activity, kind of this old frontal boundary here, and of course up near the area of low pressure, the parent area of low pressure and a little bit of this sort of hodgepodge with a kind of a weak frontal boundary up to the north of us in Canada. Let's look at the modeling. European on the left-hand side, we have the Canadian model on the right-hand side. And Canadian has a tendency to handle the uh, tropical systems very, very well, so we'll compare notes here. Uh, we've had a few showers in parts of southern Vermont kind of roll through during the overnight period. It's been mainly night times that we've seen any kind of precipitation, less so in the day times. And that's been kind of nice. Uh, with the fireworks displays and whatnot. Uh, we could get caught uh, a little bit differently with that uh, later on today. Uh, slight chance to the north, a little bit of a chance to the south. The southern more thunderstorms across southern New England will be potentially stronger. I don't think they'll be too bad here in the northern areas, but we could see some isolated thunderstorm activity there. This is, of course, a Burl, and we'll watch its advance. This is going into the day uh, tomorrow. This would be 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, Saturday. And you can also note the frontal system that this area of low pressure will then track into the region and we'll see some shower and thunderstorm activity in the afternoon on Saturday. Then that moves out uh, by the morning hours, uh, late morning hours on Sunday. We're looking at a pretty good day of dry weather. I'm going to ignore this. I think this is just a little bit more of a cloud feedback. You can kind of see that with the Canadian model here. But, uh, and the Euro does that quite a bit, so it's nothing unusual. That's one of the flaws of the European model, otherwise it's tip-top. So Burrow makes landfall. It looks like a Corpus Christi or a little bit south of there, Brownsville. 
uh, Texas, and then it slows down and does this peripheral thing here. And as it uh, as it moves in, we have this next weather system that's going to be developing for basically Tuesday night into Wednesday morning in the uh, westerlies, and pretty strong jet stream for most of the week with pretty high wind shear. So any thunderstorm activity that does develop is going to tap into those wind fields and bring it down to surface and make some threats here for some impacts potentially for severe weather. Looking at the GFS Ensemble centered on Montpelier, you can see that uh, a lot of noise in the system. Uh, it's working off convection and whatnot, and we do have some opportunities for a little bit of precipitation, but you notice it's very limited. It's a little bit more of a standout here for basically uh, a Friday night, Saturday. Uh, excuse me, Saturday night, Sunday, I should say. Then a little bit less, and we dry out for a couple days, and then we have another shot of it somewhere along about uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday, and a lot of noise in the system. Overall, uh, total QPF looks like this, and so a little bit of an uptick, levels out, and then a gradual uptick here. The deterministic uh, GFS model really wants to go to town on that, so looks like a potential heavy rain scenario there, but this far out, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Looking at uh, uh, CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy, the big days would be, again, on uh, Saturday, and it's a Saturday night, kind of lesser amounts, and then a little bit more on as we get into Tuesday night into Wednesday. Of course, this is working with uh, available sunshine, so it's a little more difficult. But the thing I want to show you here is uh, wind shear, and wind shear is pretty, pretty strong here over the next few days. We're looking at uh, generally 40, 45 knots, and so uh, peaking out, uh, we could see some issues here as those thunderstorms do tap into the stronger winds aloft and bring them back down to surface and organize them. And then we get down to into the 30 uh, knot range around wind shear, which is a little bit more common for a more typical for midsummer, but still we could see some isolated cells get pretty strong once we hit the next batch of uh, significant precipitation, which would be basically uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday. Really dry and really hot out west. All the precipitation is generally along or east of the Rocky Mountains, and uh, a lot of that even east of the mid-Mississippi Valley, the upper Mississippi Valley. So we have the Great Lakes. We have a little bit of a drier train here, a little more of a, a storm track here with that parent area of low pressure I showed earlier, and then some secondary business, uh, mostly to the south of us, so kind of getting hit from different directions all in all. But that's the total amount of QPF for the next seven days by the Weather Prediction Center. And looking at temperature anomalies, uh, two-meter temperature anomalies, you can see warmer than normal along the east coast, warmer than normal along the west coast, a little bit cooler in the interior sections of uh, North America. Moss temperatures over the course of the next five days, these are high temperatures only. Shows you that we're running a little bit above normal, about by three degrees. And with uh, projected heat uh, coming in, it does look like we'll see a little bit more of that. Uh, three to seven days out, according to the Weather Prediction Center weighted uh, meteorological output guidance. In the tropics, we have Burl, Hurricane Burl currently, and uh, this is going to probably weaken, go down to tropical storm force winds, and then eventually Cat 1, according to the National Hurricane Center guidance. And uh, nothing else to follow it, which is a little bit of a break in the action. European Ensemble Tropical Cyclone uh, from Weather Nerds, uh, always good. You can see this is Burl cutting across the uh, Yucatan Peninsula, dumping out in the Bay of Campeche, southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Arrival, a little bit of a stronger uh, hurricane, Category 1, uh, 74 miles per hour or stronger. And then when you're looking at uh, that curve and then a, a rapid weakening, but notice this one whisker does make it almost to Montreal and holds together as potentially 20 to 30, uh, maybe 30 to 40 knots. Unlikely, but we could see a little bit of that moisture uh, after this outlook period at that point in time. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weather Me Highs. Thanks for watching.